talk a little bit about what's going on with the SAG strike. We've just wrapped up. They've officially ratified the Writers Guild strike, but the SAG strike is still going strong. And there's an article in Variety today that says SAG-AFTRA bully, uh, alleges bully tactics as studios suspend negotiations. I find that funny because I consistently, whenever we do any type of story that involves these unions, I call them union bullies because they are absolutely bullies. They've used bullying yeah. tactics on their own members. They're they're cry bullies worse than anything and the big part that gets mentioned in this article so talks broke down after they thought they were going well it says in a statement to members after midnight the union accused studios of engaging in bully tactics and said that the studios had walked away from the bargaining table after refusing to counter the union's latest offer this is the most interesting part it says the key stumbling block is a union proposal to share in streaming revenue mm -hmm. with the AMPTP which would cost $800 million a year. Now that is the studio's estimate of these revenue sharing costs, not the union's uh, mm -hmm. estimate of what the revenue sharing costs would be. It says, we have negotiated with them in good faith, despite the fact that last week they presented an offer that was shockingly worth less than they proposed before the strike began, says the SAG, uh, SAG after told membership. These companies refuse to protect performers from being replaced by AI. They refuse to increase your wages to keep up with inflation, and they refuse to share a tiny portion of the immense revenue your work generates for them. SAG after wants to share a streaming revenue for all union covered shows both made for streaming and films and TV shows licensed from other platforms which would go well beyond the success based bonuses won by the Writers Guild they don't we're not talking profit sharing we're talking people that have no financial investment in these projects looking for revenue sharing so that comes from what you called the big socialist pot of <laughs> revenue that Netflix keeps from all of their projects collectively. But, well, and yeah, because because there's no re there's no ad based yeah. other than the ad. Most tier. of that revenue will come from people who subscribe to keep watching their most successful shows like Stranger Things. Yeah, the, the ones not that, that we watch. Not to watch Warrior Nun. Mm. So any of the shows that are losing money mm. are they're saying because they're covered by the union we should still get a share of revenue from projects other than our own. Which is the opposite of merit-based. Right. It pushes away so from that. So the, the Writers Guild <clears throat> agreements seem to reward people for making actually good content. Like it <laughs> it will reward people for good quality content finally when before that they didn't value merit at all. I don't mind the idea of like, look, look at give give some of these actors the ability to enter producer roles where they can invest in their projects, right? Where they well, that's can what financially. That's they did for Jenna Ortega on Wednesday. Exactly, they should be doing that so that like, look, you want to share in the profits, the revenue. You should financially invest in the profit. You do, that's what happens at a Fortune 500 company, right? You can work for a company like Disney, but you can also buy stock in a company that you work for. Well, yeah, I mean, like. Why aren't these Basically, companies? Basically, it said that SAG-AFTRA is asking for 57 cents per subscriber per year on all streaming platforms. Uh, and look, the they, they also reference this as the same failed strategy as the writer strike. Well, where would this money go? Uh, to the union directly, I'm guessing. I don't know. But what... Okay, this isn't for the actors. This is for the union. Yes. What is the union going to spend it on? Politicians. politicians like are they are they going to use it on health, funds, insurance? health insurance no. yeah. the, the retirement the, funds but the on point any is, of that? Is like, i'm just i'm just shocked at the idea that you're in a job where you get a flat fee to do a job right what makes entertainment so different especially on a streaming platform where this isn't network television where your stuff is being replayed with ads okay. over it this is gay but i think the reason they think it's different when they're working in entertainment rather than a, a normal job mm -hmm. is because their heart is in it you know that's like oh wait i put so stupid. much of my heart into these projects i deserve more than someone who is fixing a toilet like that's what i think they they yeah. their thought process actually is i think that the unions right now are focused on external wins meaning like the articles that say they got what they wanted from these from these deals but the studios want the quiet wins which is they get to cancel all the projects that they don't want to do anymore they get to belt tighten the way they even mentioned in this other article it says like what is the world what does hollywood look like post strike they admit in this article streaming is not a profitable business model there are only two streaming services that operate at a profit that is netflix and hulu 
Those are the only oh, ones. Oh, it didn't mention Hulu, but it, it said that um, things like Disney Plus or Paramount Plus or Peacock, all of these. All lose money. They all lose money. They all have theoretically plans to make money eventually. Like they're all saying, oh, we'll break even by the end of 2024. It never seems to work out. And Netflix reported a $6.5 billion profit last year. Mm. It seems like Netflix but what, like, what, what is did the they, only what one. What did they invest in? What did they put into it is what I want to know. Like how much money is put into it every year? And most of that revenue comes from the same shows and comedy specials, not from it Comes the from people nuts. re-watching yes. Suits and re-watching <laughs> exactly. Psych and uh, Seinfeld and Friends. That, that's why every time The Office go, license deal ends, it becomes a mm -hmm. mad dash to see who's going to be the next streaming service to finally yeah. get the office on there because it's actually drawing eyeballs to the platform the the other thing is like look they the the unions used the strike to tighten budgets and to get rid of um all of these like first look deals that they didn't want to go forward with anyway and they want to move towards an industry that is uh no longer success divorced from compensation meaning like uh what they were doing before was like large upfront payouts and costs on shows with no return on investment now they want to put medium-sized budgets and reward you if the show actually does well but what's going to end up happening is like so like if they want merit-based the media when they want a show to succeed they'll just manufacture <laughs> buzz for a show like they always do yep Right? They will just start writing a thousand articles about the show that nobody's watching, where there's no honest buzz about it, and they're gonna have to find a way around that because when when there's buzz for a show now, it's not connected to the media. It's connected to social media. The reason why Dahmer was as was as great as it was had nothing to do with the fact that uh, that they were writing articles about it. It turned into mm -hmm. memes or the success of Wednesday. Exactly. It. it wasn't necessarily because it was like a great show. I enjoyed it, it was fine, but it was because people made TikTok dances. It turned into a social media frenzy. Exactly, and the other thing is like when, when in the other article, these streaming services, which right now have to, to have to like button up their tie and lie to investors. <laughs> it says like streaming, the quote was, streaming profitability will come led by advertisers and getting value propositions right. So just cable again. Right. Cable. Yeah, well, what they're planning to do is raise the prices of ad-free tiers. And, until ad, now, and ad tiers. Netflix is and raising ad the ad tier. But just make everyone again. retreat to the ad tiers yeah. so that they can make advertiser money. And they talk about how peak, uh, in 2017, the head of FX talked about how peak television is done. I still maintain that television peaked in 2012 or 2013 when the really, really good shows were spread amongst five to six several networks, including cable. And the, the head of FX basically says, look, there's at this time, there was 400 and something shows on the, on the air. That's not tenable. You mm -hmm. can't do that forever. There aren't enough people to be like, there's just not enough interest in all of this stuff for everybody to watch, to develop large audiences for all of these shows. That number is now ballooned to almost 600. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Like people don't have that much time. And a lot of people there, whether you like it or not, they're gonna be like, look, I don't know what to watch. Oh, look at that meme about Jenna Ortega. I'm going to go watch. But the, res the result is actually a good thing, <laughs> which means they're going to stop taking risks on shitty shows. And that's going to end up. Then there was this other article where they talk about how what that's going to do is it's going to hurt the, the, the diversity, equity and inclusion crowd because they're going to go back to merit based yeah. policies. This is from an article from Yahoo that says Hollywood uh, minority writers uh, fear diversity downfall. And it says employment figures for the industry back up claims that minority writers are underrepresented. The share of black, indigenous and people of color in the screen employment was 22.6% in 2020, while the groups accounted for make up 42% of the of the United States population. White people held 77.4% of the jobs, represented 57.8% of the population, according to the report. Disabled people <laughs> hold 1% of writing roles for television series, pilots, screenplays, yet 27% of America uh, you know, I, reports I, a disability. I just get really warm, fuzzy <laughs> feelings when I watch a show and I know that 20% of the writers on the show were disabled. Uh, yeah, that really makes me feel so, good about yeah, myself. Is it just me or is this, is this stuff actually actually starting to reach the point or or I feel like it's reached the point where it's it's just mockable so much that people <laughs> just 
I can't take any of it seriously. I, it's I, just, I, it's so I, ridiculous. I tweeted about this yesterday. I was like, look, these companies are supposedly profit-seeking entities worth billions of dollars. When you go out to buy a car or when you go to pick what doctor to take your kids to, you don't ask what percentage of the doctors are I mean, disabled. The craziest part of that just on its face is I thought, you know, the majority of people who are disabled in this country are already retired mm -hmm. anyway. I bet you they're counting like ADHD in this and Is uh, ADHD like according to the government a disability? I don't know if they're talking physical disability only or if they're talking about what percentage of the American population hey, why what percentage you... of people with mental illnesses are writing scripts Wait, these days? <laughs> too many. Well, why would you want someone with ADHD writing a script? They're not going to be productive enough. <laughs> it's... Uh, selfishly, I want this strike to <clears throat> go another six days so that it ends up being longer than the uh, 1980 yeah. they also... strike, but I want it to end primarily because I want actors to start doing promo interviews for their projects again so we can talk about the stupid things that they say. Yeah, we are kind of in like a dry spell right now. Yeah. They also talk about in the other article about how like one of the big things that's going to go bye-bye is movies for people over the age of 35. So the the, the, the movies you're going to get are going to be even more dumbed down. I think that, that, so Tim talks about this on IRL a lot. In the future, you're going to be able to just tell AI, make this for me, and it will go ahead and create it like make this this movie i want to watch a movie about blah 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 and as gen z dies off yeah or as as millennials die off and in the gen z the one that were raised on coco melon and, and mr it, beast and went to mr beast and youtube rather than actually ever living really through well, a terrestrial tv i age. have no idea what you said yeah. <laughs> that's what this says is young people are on youtube and TikTok. People in the middle like millennials gen x they're watching streaming services and the older people are Still you know, quickly Netflix. dying off and watching cable, it's gonna die soon. So well, well, if you, I don't feel like, and maybe I'm just a little more technically savvy than most of the people my age, but I don't feel like the age of the person is gonna make a difference once people realize, oh, you can just type in, hey, make me this, mm -hmm. and it'll make it for you. I no, I think it, I think it speaks to their interest because <laughs> my generation grew up at a time where there were still movie stars. My time grew up at a time where, like, you actually like there are like when we went to see Oppenheimer, there are li the, the term Nolan bro is, a, is it sounds like a joke, but it's a thing. There are people who they go there to see his art, not to see some type of script that might be a facsimile of what he might create. So I'm just saying, they see as our Top generation Gun dies Maverick off, because it Tom Cruise is in but it, it, it won't. I don't think. I mean, maybe there will be people that are that are still you know people that are older that are still interested in actors and stuff, but I. I don't know that that I mean why wouldn't you just say make a movie with blah 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 you know with the actor that I want because the, because AI is not going to be limited to to just oh it it is likely that AI is not going to be limited by things like oh you can't have this person in it or you yeah. can't have etc and it'll if it's po if it is if Tim's right and and I think that he's probably onto something if it's true that you're going to be able to have AI generate it what, what's the point of waiting for it? For I'm saying it, it'll stuff. be at the behest of like the, I, I do think the age makes a difference here. Like, like for me, for me, knowing that that actor didn't like choose to do that role would actually color how I take it. The, like, the idea like of giving an AI a prompt to make a movie for me is like, I would never want to do that. There are like, already I, that's people not that do that with music. There no, are and that's what I was going to get into. I said, like, I feel like it's a little bit... Uh, the same as music that may maybe you're right that like the people will be but that to me that's a novelty like to me it's a novelty to hear a song that i already know that wasn't created by ai i mean i understand by it, it sounds i mean you're essentially you're making a supply side argument right like people don't know what they want until you show them yeah right? in a lot so of people, ways people would say so like the the supply side economics argument is is when you have a an economy that can create innovations and and things yeah. that's when people are like ooh. That I want. You didn't know you wanted an iPhone until the iPhone was created. So people won't know that they like, or they won't know that that they can, they yeah. can get this thing unless, or they, that they have the option unless it's put in front of them. You know what I mean? I feel like it would end up becoming a subgenre rather than the rather than the rule. Because I feel like for, uh, oh, I lost my point. What was I? I had such a great point to make too. It was so great. But I do, I feel like it'll end up becoming a, a subgenre that certain people like. Because, okay, no, so, so what it is, think about when people go on Netflix and they spend an hour 
scrolling. They don't choose anything. They like the, there's the people who say like I wait to make my food until I decide what I want to watch because otherwise I'll make my food and it'll be cold by the time I <laughs> actually. You wait for the the screen to just like that. That's an yeah, active because, because process of, in your brain to make those decisions that I think people don't want to make. People get frozen because they they have too many options. Yes, that happens. You you don't know what you want or you see multiple things and you can't make a decision. Well, that's Netflix. Why, still... If you give people a, if you give people like two or three options, yeah. they can make a decision. When you give them fifty options, they're like uh. What am I supposed uh, to do with yeah, this? I don't know. Netflix still makes money off of you, even if you sit there scrolling all night. Like if if <laughs> so. I'm if somebody's like, okay, we got this movie, and it's you can have it star Tom Cruise, Denzel Washington, Bruce Willis, uh, uh, and, and they listen ten actors. I'm going to spend an hour trying to think of which of those ten actors I want to fit in there, and then I'm going to have to think which one of the ten actors who's going to play his his uh, antagonist am I going to have to fit in there? By the time I've made that decision, I'm ready for bed. For, for all yeah, those it's just things. I don't so, find that idea appealing. I, I feel like that, like that's it's, uh, like we'll maybe see generations, when we get there. maybe generations down the line as how we actually consume content changes. I, th I think that uh, you guys are going to be surprised at how fast people. Uh, people is, uh, glob onto stuff like that because and I think that the, the cell phone was something that really kind of made me believe that because the, the, the pocket computer essentially there's only a handful of people that I know that once they saw what a cell phone could do were like no I don't want it I think I know three people that don't have mm. a, a modern day smartphone yeah. that they're like I want my flip phone or I have this kind of thing and they're all over 60 yeah. You know, and, and, and then everybody else, even people that are over 60 or whatever, they, they still are on Facebook. They have their iPhone or smartphone or whatever. So I think that, that once people see how the function goes and it, yeah. it, just so long as it's not super complex, I think that it's something that people would do a lot. It also, what, what, what that does to me, and like, this is, this is a personal preference here. There's something really depressing about that because one of the things I love about movies and television is when you see a movie with an actor that you didn't necessarily know about and they give this great performance or an actor you do know about who you don't think would be good in that role because they, maybe it's not the genre. It's like when Jim Carrey started doing stuff that wasn't purely comedy, right? Like, I want to be surprised by the performance from somebody who I didn't imagine in that role, but I'm actually limiting it to like, oh, I can imagine that this actor could do this. So I'm only going to be given what I have the, what I believe is possible or entertaining to see rather than what somebody else came up with the idea of and then ends up surprising me like that to me is more joyous than the idea that I can just pick the best actor that I've ever seen for each of these it's like it, to me it's akin to playing with dolls or playing with your your action figures and I I don't see the cinema experience the same way but you're absolutely right that as technology evolves and as our relationship with technology evolves that that could become more commonplace but I personally hope that that's not what happens I don't I don't want that to be where entertainment goes Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.